Hello everyone, and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Steve, a Scottish wild camper, explorer, and adventurer. So if this is something you're interested in, then click the subscription button and follow me on my wild adventures around Scotland. So back in May 2023, I set out on a solo bikepacking adventure, wild camping around the North Coast 500, taking 20 days. I was also doing this for charity, the Trussell Trust, who deal with food banks and food poverty. I was raising funds for those that are finding it extremely difficult to feed themselves and their families. The North Coast 500 starts at Inverness and covers over 500 miles of the north coast of Scotland. A fairly new route that reaches some of the most incredible places in Scotland, with breathtaking scenery, views and stunning beaches. This adventure would test me physically and mentally and push me to a new level. I will be alone and will have to deal with whatever the North Coast 500 throws at me. This is the bike I will be doing my adventure on. It's a white 801 mountain bike with Ortley bags on the back at 40 litres each and Rhino Walk handlebar bags on the front. The bike itself has been serviced and prepped, ready for this adventure. This was going to be some adventure, for sure. So sit back and let me take you camping on the wild side. blue sky there coming up, sun's starting to rise, it's probably about five o'clock, slept not too bad last night, a little bit tossing and turning and sorting my pillow and all that kind of stuff, um, very calm, no wind which is Probably quite good, in a way. A little bit midges out this morning. Made my cup of tea. And I think the plan is to get an early start away. And I'm going to head to Ullapool. Um, it's 18 miles away. So it's a pretty well straight road there. Give or take. This is not the NC500 road, so it is going to be a little bit quieter, so that's quite a good thing. Um, there's less likely to be holiday traffic, as we say. Um, bit of a grey sky over there, but relatively I think it's going to be a good day. I think it was forecast, but i seen the other day it's going to be a pretty warm day. I just hope I've got the right day. <laughs> I don't know my days. They've all lost them. Anyway, I'm going to get some porridge after my tea and sort the tent, get everything packed away and head away. So hopefully I'll be away by six o'clock, quarter past six or something like that. So get an early start. And uh, get to Liverpool in a few hours. I would think. So, 
It's day 15. <laughs> 15 days. Good stuff. That's what we like. On to another adventure for today. See you in a bit. Okay, everyone. Good news. And bad news. Good news. This is very quiet, very still. The sun's kind of disappeared anyway. Um, I'm packed. I'm just about to go. The bad news is that I've been sick this morning and I've no idea why. Just after my cup of tea, I don't know if it was water, but that water was fresh. Um, I don't know, I'm, and, and I can't even force a breakfast down me because I'm just, I, I'm one of these people that if I feel like I'm going to eat. I'll just be sick again. So, and the other bad news is the bloody midges are out. They're not, they're annoying, they're not, <laughs> they're not bad for me anyway. But anyway, the plan is just to take an easy cycle and just see how things go and see how my stomach feels. It's, o it's okay at the moment. It was churning, but I've been sick, so whatever's there's out, hopefully. And just see how this goes. And if I get hungry later on, or at some point, I'll just stop and make my porridge. Um, I'm a wee bit paranoid now. Uh, it's 18 miles to... Pool, so that's where I'm heading and hopefully leave all these midges behind here so let's be positive my stomach will be fine all the pool is waiting for me there and we're going to have a lovely cycle so let's go Okay, um, I've actually, I'm up probably about three miles from Ullapool. I've stopped in at uh, a campsite I've just passed here, and it's uh, at Mayor Point Holiday Park. And if you're passing this way, it's absolutely stunning. What a lovely campsite. And the guy let me sit in there and, well, I had a coffee and a, cup, a bit of cake and charged the phone and the camera. It was just brilliant. So it's lovely, clean and everything like that, right on the beach, as you see, so well worth coming here. I'm going to get back on the bike and head to Ullapool. Okay, I stopped in uh, Ullapool and I've just come out, heading south again. Um, great little place, Ullapool. Not been there for such a long time and I can't remember it, but 
lovely place to do it all up. Um, yeah, I picked up a battery bank there, which is going to work wonders for me, so it saves me panicking about a charge in the morning. Um, and yeah, so heading south, and I'm on my journey to my next destination, so let's get going again. Oh, and I'm feeling a bit better. Well, a lot better. But I've had something to eat and a coffee and sandwich. See you in a bit. Just taking a wee break. Anybody needing any logs? <laughs> what? I just stopped in at a visitor centre back there for an hour for a coffee and a, a biscuit just a wee rest it's the a gorge walk that's actually opened up a short time ago absolutely absolutely amazing wonderful staff the, the whole lot so it's definitely worth a stopping point for a coffee or a little short walk um, and this is the road to my destination and it's amazing just cycling through all these all these hills and absolutely stunning and the sun's out and it's just making it so much better the roads are pretty quiet this is the odd car and if I turn this round there's a little bit of snow still on that hill sneaking in there so yeah, that snow is just not wanting to melt, it's staying. So yeah, I'm just going to carry on. I've got about 20 something kilometres to go. Um, but what a lovely afternoon, evening to cycle on. I'm back on, this road is actually the North Coast 500 route now, so I'm back on it. Um, and it's nice and quiet so far. Maybe touch wood stays like that. Yes. Let's continue on this journey and see what else we can find. I've just done a most amazing freewheeling all the way down from the top of that moor, coming down to here through a tight rock face, which was absolutely amazing. And it's just, I've come through a woodland, pine woodland, and it just happens to open up to these mountains at the side. The smell of gorse as well, it's absolutely incredible. And all the way up. It's amazing. The big pine forests up in the bankings there. Vast. This place behind me here is Dundonnell, just um, on the map, uh, and it's the start of the the sea. What a view! It opens right up here, and because we're hitting the sea, it gets a bit chilly. So put the jacket on for that wind chill. But what a amazing! Lovely. The roads have been pretty quiet, so it's just an odd car coming past. But I think I've got about eight kilometres to go. It's not very far. So we're just going to plod on, keep picking away at it. It's been all right. Everything's working fine. And, yeah, it's getting a wee bit cloudy, but the sun is over there somewhere. A nice long stretch along the waterside, and then I think we go uphill slightly, so, yeah. <laughs> 
but on we go, as they say. Finally at my destination, and this is Northern Lights campsite. I could not remember where I was planning on stopping, and here we are. <laughs> it's all a surprise. Well, let's go in and have a wee wander and find a spot. Okay, that's me got the tent up and I'm just, I've got most things sorted. It's a bit of a bomb site as well, but um, got my dinner on. It is um, Uncle Ben's Mexican style rice, um, which is good. And I've got half a chorizo sausage in it as well. I've just diced that up and put it in just to bulk it out. Um, it's absolutely heaving my midges out there <laughs> and I think half of them are in the tent <laughs> so <laughs> and uh, yeah so I, I, I can see the midgenet coming on um, very soon uh, yeah this place is absolutely beautiful just the scenery and uh, just with things going on so it's really nice so I'm going to get my dinner and take a wander. See you later. spent the last 20 minutes, if not half an hour, fighting midges. They were inside the tent and there was literally thousands of them. So I've now exterminated them all closed the door and I've come down to the water edge to try and get away from them. <laughs> I never normally get bothered by midges but that was pretty unbearable. I had to pull out the midge net, <clears throat> my first line of defence. Yes, well today 
<clears throat> well, tell you where I am. I'm on the Northern Lights campsite. And I think when I was Googling this area from a 30 mile stretch, this is kind of like the, the area where it was landing in. This is more than 30 miles to my stretch, so I'll... I'll <laughs> yeah, this is quite a lot. So, yeah, the, the, I was trying to do 30 miles a day and this is an area where it was just a bit over what I wanted to do but it was quite difficult to get a proper wild camping spot down there. And such a lovely little setting down at the water, it's just a two, three minute walk and you're down at the water edge. But today was a big cycle, 77 kilometres I think I clocked up. Um, stopped in a la pool, set off early, obviously I never had a breakfast because I was ill. Set off early, quarter past six, got to a la pool, I think nine-ish, half nine or something like that. Could have been a bit later, I can't remember. <clears throat> um, found a battery bank, done a little bit of shopping um, for the next couple of days and had a coffee, just, and the sun came out, so I just took advantage of it and just relaxed in a, with a coffee. Turned off the road at uh, this new National Trust Gorge Centre, which is actually pretty cool. It's just been open a matter of months, and uh, looks great. Had a coffee there, a stop. And the road from there to here was 20... Seven kilometres or something like that, round about that. A little bit of uphill, but a lot of downhill. And when I mean a lot of downhill, I mean a couple, a good couple of miles. So you're freewheeling a couple of miles. What a great scenic road that is. I could not film enough, but what a lovely area to come through, cycle through even. Um... Not much in the way of shops. In fact, I'd probably say zero. So there's your a bit of a, a warning that there's very little on that road. There's a, a pub a few miles back the way, which is a just on the roadside. But then you've got here. There's there's no shop or anything on the campsite. Um, it's basically. A wild camping site, I would have recommended, I would have said, but um, <clears throat> it's nice enough and that'll do a night. So I, I've been fed and watered. Um, I'll go back for a, to wash the dishes and get a cup of tea and probably head to bed. Uh, Yeah, <laughs> head to bed. Day 16 is 41 kilometres. And it, it doesn't tell me where I'm going to, but it just, there's quite a lot to see. Once I cut from here across, I think I'm, I'm heading to a beach. That's all I can say. <laughs> but that's good. Beach camp tomorrow. Happy with that. Good. And that's a sandy beach. Quite good that I don't even know where I'm going tomorrow. I know I'm, it's a beach, but I haven't Google mapped exactly where my route is taking me to the name of the beach, I mean. Um, so this is quite exciting. But it's 41 kilometres, so not a bad day. What a lovely evening to finish day 15. I'll say goodnight and I'll see you tomorrow. Night for now.
Folks, that's me sorted, tents down, breakfast, still feeling a wee bit rubbish and I'm just wondering if it's a wee touch of sunstroke or something. Um, I couldn't eat all my breakfast and I was a wee bit shivery last night and I was sweating so I hope I'm not coming down with something. Um, but I'm going to guess probably sunstroke because there is a heat in the air or has been and yeah I'm going to put sun cream on my face. My ears are a wee bit crispy in the corners or the edge but uh, yeah we'll put some sun cream on just to protect us from that but I'm heading up to a little place called Pool U and then I'm going to take a leg right so I'm going north and I'm going to check out a little beach away up there I can't remember the name of it but I'll uh, check in with you later on to tell you the name of it but it's been a not a bad little site it's been a good little stop point anyway and it's a lovely morning, nice and breezy, but I think there is a good heat in that air actually. Um, but yes, all good. So we're going to set off and we'll catch you soon. I forgot to mention, this is day 16. <laughs> day 16 on this adventure. Just done a, a few miles now. <clears throat> when I came out of the campsite, it was all uphill, and there was a big viewpoint right at the top. And I just spent 10 15 minutes there just uh, admiring the view. And a couple came along and just said hello because they recognized me from um, various other camps and up at the gorge as well. So they were staying local, which was absolutely, you know, it's so nice when people just recognise you, just say hello and say well done for doing what you're doing and just have a just general chat about life. It was great. So they're going on to Sky, so they're in their little camper van and a fantastic couple, just really nice to chat to. And left them came along the road and a cyclist was coming up the other side and shouted enjoy the downhill and I was just beaming with a smile and I've just come down which feels like a, it's probably a bit exaggerated but a good few miles of of free running all the way down the hill it was just an absolute breath of fresh air just that little burst of energy and giving you that break, uh, it was absolutely fantastic. So, feeling good, and we're heading forward. See you in a bit. So, just stopped again, <laughs> scattered around this roadside or this coastal side to heading towards Pool U are loads of little beaches and. You can't drive to them, most of them, but you can get 
little, there's little paths, there's parking spaces at the side of the road. You just head down. And I've just come over some falls, big rapidy stuff. And there's a little path to this beach here, which is absolutely beautiful. An amazing little beach. How nice is that, just to go down there and just chill out with a coffee or something like that, or a picnic. Probably about a five minute walk there from, from the, the roadside. Absolutely beautiful. This is seriously hard work, I'll tell you. Absolutely ringing. What a fun and climb. Oh, jeez. Oh my god. Oh, dare to look back. This is just absolutely beautiful. What a lovely little bay. There the couple of beaches that I was filming earlier and letting you know about. But what a gorgeous little bit to come. Cracking mountains in the back. Absolutely stunning. I think the perks with cycling, the North Coast 500, is being able to just stop wherever you want and just set up set up shop basically and eat where you want um, I'm just cooking some rice at the moment and a wee bit of sausage there as well and just feel a bit peckish so hey here we go but just great to have a view looking out into the sea and the hills and beaches it's just brilliant Absolutely fantastic. Well, I'm hungry. So I better eat. So I've just cycled along the road and I've hit a wee town, a wee village I should say. A little village called Laid. And I've just stopped at the general store here and I've got some some munchies, so like a can of juice and some couple of sweets and things. And I picked up a Mackey's ice cream. <laughs> Just what you need on a day like this. And I was just speaking to the shopkeeper there and she's telling me it's eight miles to Port U. At least Port U. And then it's five miles up to my little spot. And so it's not really not really that far to be honest on a day like this. It's gonna be well worth it. And she's offered to fill my water bottle for me because that's how kind people are around here. So, thanks very much to them at the Laid General Store. So we'll, we'll sit and have this ice cream before it melts and have my juice and we'll get back on the road. Okay folks, I've just stopped at this viewpoint here and this big expanse of water behind me there is Loch U. And I've just been to the, the sort of notice board here and it was actually the Arctic Convoy base back in the day. So a good bit of history here. They still come in, ships do still come in every now and again and fuel up on their way around the British Isles. But I'll tell you in more detail of it just in a second. This is Loch U, and it's here in the early 1940s that it and the locals played a vital role in the events of World War II. It was a huge naval base for the Arctic convoy. Many thousands of men, 
and hundreds of ships would have passed through here, heading for war-torn Russia. Churchill described it as the worst journey on earth. Here ships would have carried supplies to Russia. Its location was key, as its deep waters provided access for large ships and allowed it to be easily fortified in case of attacks, using light and heavy anti-aircraft guns as defence. It saved so much time for the ships leaving here to reach Russia, instead of using the English Channel, which was longer and would have been an easier target for the enemy. Today, it is still used as a refuelling base for the Navy while they travel around the UK coastline in somewhat more peaceful times. So there you go, a wee bit about Loch U and its history there. Absolutely stunning little coastal cul-de-sac here. Little villages dotted up and down the place. Um, there is the Isle of U, which there's still people living on it as well. And it's just absolutely beautiful. So I don't know if you can see just in the very distance there, there's a glimmer of shining sand. Well, that's roughly where I'm going. Well, that's what my OS map says I'm going. <laughs> so yes, I've got probably, I don't know how many miles or not, six miles or something like that. Um, yeah, it's a great little place and I'm looking forward to it. And the weather is absolutely cracking. I've had to put more sun cream on, so... Oh, it's tiring in it as well, so that's the downside. But yes, this is Loch U. What a beautiful place. Stop here if you're passing through. Just come up to this sort of big vantage viewpoint here overlooking these mountains. And wow, look at that. This is just, it's just every corner I turn around, there's actually something there. just little villages and uh, a great little shop but I turned right and I'm heading up here probably about five miles up to this spot but yeah the, the views are just amazing so I'll come back down this road tomorrow and turn right again and then head away up to Gearloch it's absolutely beautiful. I mean, the, the, the weather's helping so much anyway, so it's a big, big relief. But yes, all going well today. Day 16. God's sake. Yeah. It feels just such a blur. But I'm so chuffed. I'm happy. Today's just been a good day. This is just a, a, a man-made adventure. It's brilliant, I love it. Let's get going. So just passing this uh, structure along the road here as I set off along the road to my spot 
and I come across this big concrete structure and basically this would be because we're on Loch U this is going to be some sort of lookout tower or um, military post of some sort so I'm going to say it's going to have um, it's going to be pretty well armed to the teeth here so probably something like uh, guns or cannons or something like that or I'm going to guess it's just a stab in the dark but yeah that's these big concrete structures are scattered all the way up and round the whole of Loch U here I have finally reached this camping spot and it's a different type of camping or is it? That's my theory anyway. Um, so this one is, there's no toilets and there's no showers or nothing so this is kind of like semi-wild camping. Um, you do pay but, so, but if the warden doesn't come and see you, you put it in the honesty box. So. It is all down to yourself to do things, you know. Somebody's got a bit of ground and letting people wild camp on it and obviously with no fires and things, so it's fair enough. Um, a cracking beach and the place I'm at is called Firemore Campsite. Campsite with a difference. There's nobody, no, no toilets and all that stuff, as I say, but... Just need to go and find a pitch and uh, get set up. But you've got some rules and regulations as it is, but the beach is absolutely stunning. And that's the one I think I showed you from way back, the other side of the water, way in the distance. <laughs> so we'll go out, we'll get set up and catch you shortly. Righty ho! Okay everyone, well, here we are at this fantastic little campsite. Is it a campsite or is it just a bit of ground that you could camp on? I, d I don't know, technically don't know. Let me know what you think about it. Um, yes, um, it's pitch and there's no toilets. It's, oh, I'm not going to start going on about that. Anyway, I've found my pitch, just a bit of grass, and set the tent up, got all my stuff sorted, foods, everything, I know what I'm having for my dinner, um, bought some little snacks and a packet of biscuits just as a treat. Um, yeah, cracking view, absolutely cracking view, and I'm just going to go down the beach for a wander, it is a bit blustery. So hopefully you'll be able to hear me if I film. Um, yeah, I, I don't really know what much to say about it. Is it you just drop money in an honesty box for the upkeep of the grass? <laughs> but this is such a lovely little spot, and looking forward to it. Um, and I'm pretty hungry, but I'm going to have a wander on the beach first. Come up and get a cup of tea and I'll put my dinner on as well but let's get down the beach
This is absolutely fantastic. Just walking from the grass to the tent is just onto the beach. It's just everything is just my whole calm is just so relaxed. This is just fantastic. This is definitely my spot. I'm definitely a seaside wild camping person. I do love the hills and I do love mountains and woods. Don't get me wrong, I'll camp anywhere. But there's something more relaxing about coming to the seaside. Just, I just feel great. Just so at ease. Absolutely lovely beach. What a perfect little bit. I mean, it's nothing fancy by any means. If that's your kind of style, I mean, it's probably easier if you had a camper van for toilets and washing and that kind of stuff. But if you're up for a wild camp, well, we do what we do then. This is just amazing. I love it. So there we go, that's dinner sorted. Um, I've got pasta, just a pasta, just a basic pasta with uh, a chorizo sausage thing through it and my cup of tea. Oh, what a day. It's just... It actually feels just like a blur that I just get here and I miss, I forget what's actually going on in between. I've met some cracking people today, by the way. Um, so if they watch this, thanks very much for stopping by and having a conversation. It's really good. And I think what when you do this sort of thing on, on a bike and you attract a lot of people a lot of people's attention so I've had many foreigners come up to me and ask me what I'm doing and why I'm doing it and how many miles I've done and things, just a general conversation and it's so good they're so friendly they're so excited to be here and they actually love Scotland had people from down south come up here and it's just amazing the span of people that come up to see such rural parts of the country yes it's the famous north coast 500 or route and that's I, I get it but some of them do go off route and it's just yeah, it's just amazing to see the people come up that want to spend time in, in Scotland. And it's, it's great to see. And they get a good warm welcome as well. It's just, I love it. I actually love it. I love meeting people from all different backgrounds and wherever you come from. I, I, it's, it's so exciting just to spark a conversation about why I'm up here and why why they're up here and we, we meet at the same point and we just have a conversation and it's sometimes we're at two opposite ends of the world 
just meeting at a random position <laughs> in a lay-by looking out to sea or something like that. It's, it's so weird. Um, and then once I've passed all the hustle and bustle with people and had a great conversation, here I am, all alone, in my tent, rekindling how my how my days went. And I wouldn't change a thing, to be honest. I wouldn't I wouldn't change a thing because that's how this adventure's supposed to go. And I'm so glad I'm doing it. All fed and watered. It was good that pasta and actually good to put a, the sausage in it. It just bulked out a little bit. But anyway, um, sun's still beaming away there. Nice cool breeze. Um, so yeah, I, there was a shop at the Port U um, and I went and got stuff. Um, so yeah, Garibaldi biscuits was a little treat. <laughs> Never had them for years. So they're going to get eaten tonight. And along with probably <laughs> a packet of licorice all sorts. Which is well needed as well. I uh, just wanted to give a shout out again for the... I think the whiskey, the fine wines and whiskey shop in Oban for giving me some of these little cans. This is the third can I've had and this is Pocket Negroni. It's a little cocktail with uh, Porter's gin and all that in it. So what a, a, such a dinky little can, I love them. And makes it all more exciting for taking away camping. Great little can. So it's 100 mils. So a couple of mouth is there. Um Yeah. Oh. So here's to another day sixteen. Oh, that's strong. Twenty one. 21.8% I think Well that's a nice little refreshing drink um, So a big shout out to them Thanks for The little cans They're great And What a nice setting Just to have A nice relaxing evening After dinner with Garibaldi biscuits Licorice all sorts And a little cocktail <laughs> Well I'm just going to relax the, the, for a wee while I'll just nibble on these biscuits and just watch the world go by to be honest still a lovely blue sky out there and maybe just catch up and write my diary and draw on my map where my leg was today but uh, I'll get that done as we watch the sea and the scenery as the sun sets it's now come that time of the evening where I've made my bed up. Well, it was already made, but just tidied everything up, got sorted. And it's now time for me to say, I shall see you in the morning. I wish you a good night. And we will have a fresh day tomorrow. It's a big day. I'm heading out to a wood near Torridon. So it is a pretty heavy cycle, 60 something kilometres, so there you go. But we'll be stopping in Gaelog, um and probably a couple other places that so fit, whatever we've got, coffee or whatever like that. Um, but yes, I shall leave it here and say goodnight.
Thank you.